through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Rada Mitchell, one of the stars of Gus, which is premiering here at South by Southwest. Um, obviously, there are any number of things that they might know you for. I mean, I, I think one of the first ones was, was it High Art. I remember mm -hmm. that years ago. Pitch Black is obviously a classic. Uh -huh. I mean, you're, was it Red Widow now on oh, TV? Oh, Red Widow. So you're kind of, you're kind of you've been uh, Silent Hill, too. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things they might know you for, but Gus is the story of, you know, two friends and their sort of love for each other and a child that one has, is, is going to have and one wants. Um, this is a pretty intense film, and I mean, there's comedy, but I mean, your character really seems like she has the weight of the world on her shoulders. I mean, she wants to have this kid, her marriage, like her husband clearly seems to have reservations about it. Like, mm -hmm. what what is it like to play sort of a character that's so bottled up and then sort of have to explode at a certain point? It seems like that might be two different characters almost. Right. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, the tone of the piece, I think, having the conceit of the story being uh, that two best friends are challenged by this idea of fertility, and one of them has got a baby accidentally, and the other one's been, like, longing to have this child desperately, so they make an arrangement that... One will give the child to the other. Yes, uh, Jesse and I coined the term "gussing it." Gussing so, it. Yeah, man. you made that into a because I guess not. It's, I mean, it's I guess, probably going to be a thing of the future. Well, just gus it off. I mean, it's like an adoption, but it's not at the same time because yeah. it's sort of like you're directly do it at home. Yeah, just so do your own adoption. So, um, so it's a novel concept, and it's rife um, and, and ready for like dissection, both in a comedy sort of and and a tragedy because it's a crazy situation. Oh yeah. Um, and so it brings up all kinds of emotions, and I think it was an interesting journey having these two characters one of them sort of who's my character I think's got all these ideas about what it is to be a girl and you know and she's creating the perfect household perfect perfect but nothing is what she really wants it to be and she's actually quite repressed yeah no totally and uh, so when she explodes it, it's sort of like the real Lizzie comes out who's a bit like the monster Lizzie and then it sort of settles down and it becomes an integrated personality not, not quite the Lizzie Borden though we're not going no. for that Lizzie well no but, but she's definitely um yeah, definitely know what we saw in the beginning of no. the film. And, I mean, like, the end is heartbreaking in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. Which we're not going to spoil, so we'll leave that for people to see. Yeah. You played a wide array of characters. Uh -huh. I mean, what is there sort of, like, reason why or rationale you have in terms of picking the projects that you do. I mean, this yeah. one is a really tender, sort of small, four-person kind of project, but obviously, I mean, you've done big action movies as well. I mean, what is it that sort of connected you to this project that was what made you want to do it? Uh, well, in this case, I was sort of excited about the prospect of working with a, with a first-time director who'd written it and... That's, was, a, that's an interesting perspective. It's, it's, it's challenging yeah. because it's like, well, you're not quite sure what's going to happen with it because there's no evidence of what's happened before. Right. But it's also exciting. And it's great to be around people who are passionate and, you know, taking, you know, taking chances and, um, you know, really going for it. So I was inspired by Jessie for that reason. And then I really kind of liked what she was planning to do and we were able to get a really great cast. Oh, yeah. um, and I think the whole movie obviously is cast dependent because it's sort of based on totally, four people. Totally, four people, yeah. Um, and the writing was sort of, it wasn't so ambitious that that couldn't work. Like yeah. it's sort of set within one space. So it it was all it looked it had the odds going for it, I guess. And the script itself was like characters were really interesting, and I think that's a really fascinating subject for you know women in our sort of age bracket. Uh -huh. It's like a big question. A lot of people are missing the window of opportunity to have kids, and what does that mean? And um, how does that resonate with? modern women and then there's different ways to do families all that sort of stuff's very topical and and rife for comedy as well in terms of like you and michelle like that was a huge relationship in the movie 
uh, Jesse was saying you guys had virtually sort of no prep time because it's an indie film. I mean, yeah. there's that, just not an option. I mean, the, the main thing was getting everyone in the, on set at well, the same time. Like, how, how do you, do you cast it? How do you cultivate those sort of like relationships? Because th- this is a really a film that like if those relationships weren't believable, it really would hurt the, the end product. But you right. guys felt very natural. Was that just one of those things where you're just like fucking professional <laughs> actress here? Like, no, there was some it, sort of kismet like magic to it. I mean... I think that she'd had Michelle in her mind for a long time mm. and I knew someone who knew her and it sort of we got it to her in an indirect kind of way mm. which is often better to sort of circumnavigate this whole the sort of agent aspect and then when we got together it was like oh this this is great like this is perfect we even look right yeah. like we're the same sort of size I don't know it's kind it of just very natural, yeah. cool you, you bring up a good thing that I didn't even realize until watching the movie you were a producer on this movie yeah what I mean was that was there something that led you to want to go like above and beyond just acting in the movie? Is, this, is I mean, I just saw an opportunity to, to help out because it was sort of in its you know sort of the, the beginning when I was the first person to sign uh-huh. on, I guess, and I was like, and I'd like to be a producer. Thanks. If I'm going to take if I'm going to take the gamble with you, give me something else. Yeah. Um, and what I was able to do was just help with some of the casting and bring certain crew people oh, on and whatever. But it was fairly backseat producing let me tell you even, even just adding a certain element of credibility to a production mm-hmm. I think like, it was like oh Ron Mitchell's here like you know that yeah. this is really well, I think the main thing is something like that to be the first person to sign on is a sign of like a, you know confidence in the project and I think it helps if you're if you're the first time director to be having someone who's done has a body of work behind them to sign up with you yeah. In terms of the overarching story of the film, like, I mean, your character does have, you know, some lighter moments, but you really are sort of like one of the more steady ships in this uh, discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Is is that a challenge to sort of like keep like an even keel when everything is sort of like wacky around you, like when they're fighting around you or they're joking around you? Yeah, no, it's something to sort of, it was challenge. it was interesting for me because I haven't done a lot of comedy, so I was sort of... Yeah, I was sort of playing the the heart of the story in a way. Like yeah. this is sort of where it's resonating with someone who's really invested in the idea of having a child, and that's got to feel real. Or then the whole thing's a farce. Mm-hmm. And I think the movie operates on two levels. Like it's got to be. I think it's the kind of movie that has people crying. Well, I heard people were crying. I, I would believe it with the, the end of the film. Like that yeah, was an intense. And then people scene. are laughing. So it gives you. Uh, you want to have it have the full range of emotion as part of the response. So the thing is, yeah, keeping that tone consistent with the rest of it, that was an interesting exploration for sure. Is that something that you sort of are interested in doing, is sort of like doing things you haven't done before? And granted, like, you've done a wide range of stuff, so I, I mean, I can't yeah. say if there, isn't, if there is anything you haven't done before, but yeah. do you want to pursue more comedy? Is that kind of stuff that you want to do, or is it just like you... We'll Don't see. I mean, it's it's not as comfortable for me, but like I did another one with um, John Leguizamo recently that was a lot of fun. Really? He's great. I would imagine that'd be a pretty yeah. intense one to work it's with because like, that dude is like he's improv just, central. He's improv, but he, I mean, he loves the text. Like yeah. he spends a lot of time on it. And the show is a little bit like his last, it's a little bit like his last show. I don't know if mm. you saw it. Um, sort of, he's always sort of reinventing his own life and his art. So it's sort of autobiographical. Um, but he's writing it and then rewriting it the night before and then rewriting it in the makeup chair. And then, like, you're supposed to keep up with him. He's like, I've just changed all your dialect completely. Now. Can you just do it like that? Um, but it's also cool because if you want to contribute too, he's very open to collaborating. Uh-huh. So, you know, I'll be writing my dialogue too. As somebody who's acted for a long time, is, is, is it something that you want to explore beyond just acting? Do you want to do more producing? Do you want to do writing, directing, all that sort of stuff? I mean, it seems yeah. like... I mean, it's a lot. It, it sort of sounds great. <laughs> And it's certainly what I want to do, but it's it's difficult trying to it's a process trying to figure out what your what your position is as a producer. Yeah. But I do have um, the rights to a novel right now that is probably going to be easier to do in Australia because of just finance structures that are available there. Um, and yeah, there's other things. Uh, there's certainly something I want to do more of in the future. Very cool. Um, in terms of like other stuff that you have coming out, do you have Twitter, Facebook, any of that stuff people can yeah. follow you on to I find out what you got coming out? Got on Twitter recently. Oh, very cool. Radha Mitchell underscore Radha underscore 
Mitchell. So Somebody else had Rod yeah. Mitchell. No, it's fun. We're twittering during the show. There's this the episode <laughs> of the show tomorrow night. Tonight. Shit. Yeah, yeah we're twittering Sunday. tonight. Yeah. Um, which is fun because there's people watching the show while you tweet. Yeah, that's got to be. And then the actors are tweeting with each response, other. Oh, yeah. It's quite gratifying because yeah. normally when you're like sort of being questioned about a project, it's with a journalist or someone mm. who's sort of representing the people. But in this case, people can have like direct questions like, what does this mean? Why does this happen? That's very cool. What's going to happen that. next? Well, I can't tell you now, can I? Yeah. Um, that, that, it is actually a really fun way to communicate. That's very cool. Uh, thank you, Rada. I wish you luck with Gus and uh, Red Widow and whatever else Whatever's is beyond that. Next. Yeah, I can't thank wait you. to see what you do next. Oh, yeah. Go see Olympus Has Fallen. As oh, yeah. You're in that? that too, yeah. That's like a week away or something. Two weeks. Wow. You're yeah. everywhere right What's now. What's going on? All right. And yeah. uh, check out more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Yeah. Thank you. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.